Welcome to part 3, Object Properties, Mouse and Keyboard Visualization. Every object in Studio has its own set of properties, for example, background and foreground color, reflection amount, and so on. Properties in Studio are all examined and modified through a single Properties Inspector. This inspector can be shown by clicking the I icon at the bottom of the timeline. As objects are selected and deselected, the Properties window updates to reflect what you have chosen. You can select multiple objects and edit the properties at once, in just the same way as you would when you edit a single object. If you select two objects that do not share properties, for example a shape and a text object don't share the text property, this action in Studio still works. You can edit the text object property and the change is applied to the applicable objects only, which in this case is just the single text object. Recorded screencasts are special objects in Studio. They have additional properties, including mouse and keyboard visualization. Take for example, the recording that I am showing here. The selected movie track has three buttons visible, P, M and K. These stand for Pointer Visibility, Mouse Visualization and Keyboard Visualization. You can toggle each independently. Let's cover each in turn. Pointer Visibility controls whether or not the mouse cursor of a screen recording is shown at all. If this button is off, then the mouse will not be shown on this clip. Point of visibility is enabled by default, and so you only need to disable this option if you do not want the cursor pointer to show. Mouse visualization controls whether there will be click animations around the mouse cursor each time a mouse button is pressed. If this button is on, a green animated halo will surround each mouse click. Keyboard visualization controls whether there will be a text object in the scene to represent the keys pressed by the user. This text object can be resized and its property changed just like a normal text object. To select a keyboard animation, either move the playhead to where the keyboard animation text is showing and then select it in the scene as you would normally. If you can't see it, try this alternate method. Right click the screen recording object and choose Edit Keyboard Animation. The keyboard animation will then highlight with an outline and show when the scene is selected. Note that being able to see the keyboard animation is dependent on where the playhead is. Make sure the playhead is over the screen recording segment in question when trying these actions, else you may not see any selection occur. All of these switches work for each recorded screen object. That means that if you split a single recorded segment in two, or three, or more, you can control these visualization switches independently. And this is a great way to show or hide particular visualizations as required throughout your timeline. Remember, there is no limit to how much you can split up an object. It's entirely up to you. That's the end of this video. To get a better feel for editing, spend some time experimenting with the various properties of each object type. That will give you a good feel for what customizations you can perform on each object. Remember, help is available in the shape of a full manual. There is an iBooks version available, and that includes short videos. To download, just go to the Help menu of iShowU Studio and choose Download iShow Studio Manual. As said before, iBooks version is recommended. Hey, thanks for watching!